Oh my, come on. I'm not a religious man, but can I get an amen on this? There is nothing better than slow braise, delicate, pull apart short ribs. And when you put them on top of cauliflower mash, life gets even better. So take note, it's light outside. It's a 10 after three in San Diego. By the time we finish this, it's gonna be dark. But freaking amazing, because they're so good. And these are short ribs. You buy them from any store. I mean, okay, you know, maybe not like a candy store, but almost any store will have them. And by the time we're finished with them and they braise, which just means to cook them slowly in some liquid, they'll be falling apart, tender, so delicious. You're gonna want them all the time. So we start by seasoning these guys and then searing them and they're gonna be amazing. Okay, so there's a bone side. Don't bother about seasoning that, but we will the fatty sides and the edges. Just put everybody down like that. And at this point, only salt and pepper. And we're seasoning, you know, quite aggressively. These are thick, they're meaty, and we want them to have flavor. So I'm gonna turn them on their edges, again, and then up to the other edge. Remember, no bone. We don't care about seasoning the bone side. And then over to our Dutch oven. The Dutch oven gets some oil, and we start to sear. In they go. And we're looking to give them a nice golden color on all three sides. It's gonna take you, you know, maybe three or four minutes to get through all these. Just take your time, it's all good. And yes, that sizzling sound is what you want. You know the right things are happening underneath. Just stand and breathe in the beautiful smell of cooking short rib. And after about a minute and a half or so, have a look. And that's what you want. You want that beautiful color. Then we'll lay them down on their sides now. Look, it's pretty. Oh, I love short ribs, man. And do the same thing on that side. And then on the side that hasn't been cooked yet. And when they're ready on all sides, we take them out. And look how crazy beautiful they are. Clearly they're not done. But they are looking fantastic. Would it be a sin if we didn't sear them and get them all brown and gorgeous on all sides? Absolutely. It's about building flavor and that's going to help make the flavor go from here to here. Now we dump in a bunch of vegetables. You see what I've got? I've got carrot, celery, and yellow onion. And in they go. And all we're trying to do is soften these a bit. Next goes a couple cloves of minced garlic, just like that. And I like to wait a minute or so to let it get really fragrant before I add anything else. So the garlic now starts to smell good. We mix it in. Oh boy, smell, crazy. And then two important things. Number one is about three tablespoons of tomato paste and about the same of flour, and we mix. This tomato paste flour combination is gonna help make the sauce really beautiful by the time this finishes cooking. And three more things. The first is a bottle of Guinness for deep, rich flavor. The second is a couple cups of chicken broth. Now we want to bring this to a boil, so crank the heat, let it happen, and you stir well so you make sure that you release any of the stuck on bits from the short rib that are on the bottom of the pan, but also that the flour and the tomato paste mixture becomes one with all the liquid. And when it comes to a boil, back in go the short ribs. Oh boy, the smell from here. And once they're in, we take our lid, we put it on top, we turn off the heat, and the whole thing goes into an oven at 300 degrees. I <laughs> didn't think about that. Hurry. Oh, this guy's gotta come out now. Oh boy. Couldn't have done this before, could I? Nope. No pre-planning in this house. Just Now we can close this. 
I'll do that again. A 300 degree oven, two and a half hours, maybe three, until they're super fork tender. I'm telling you, you have no idea. This needs to be New Year's for you. Get it in before people come. It's cooking while they're here. You're having champagne. We're gonna make something with champagne. When it's ready, it comes out. You serve it on top of cauliflower mash. Could be mashed potatoes, but cauliflower mash is insanely delicious. Oh, why don't we make some? Oh, I forgot the time. Goes on top. Stupid. Come on. Hello. First time. Goodbye. Before we get to the cauliflower, that's called a Dutch oven. It's a big ass, huge, heavy pot, great for all kinds of things. Especially when you're cooking in the oven for an extended period of time. You want the thing to hold the heat, do all the right things. It's perfect for that. It's perfect. We'll, we'll put a link to a couple of them. That one's expensive. I don't necessarily like expensive things. But owning a Dutch oven is a very good thing, so you'll like that. Okay, cauliflower now. Alrighty, so here's our cauliflower. Head of cauliflower. We need to break it down. Uh, I don't know that there's a right or a wrong way. I just know what I do, which is this. I cut these big, what do you call this part? Stalks? I cut the stalk parts off first, like this. And once they're out, I go like this. I don't want too much of the, like the, the stem part. Like in this case, this guy, I'm gonna cut close like this. And he should come right off like that, right? So I take everybody off first, everybody, like they're people. So we just cut them into roughly the same sizes, roughly, and get them in our uh, steamer. Here we go. And you don't have to be neat with this because it's all being pureed. Everybody now goes in our steamer. And for our purposes today, our steamer will consist of a pot of boiling water and a colander on top. In goes the cauliflower and a lid. And in about uh, 15, 20 minutes, when the cauliflower florets are soft enough to poke a knife into really easily, literally like a hot knife through butter, we take them off. And by the way, I just noticed my arm. It's not chicken pox and it's not adult acne. It's freaking hot oil splattered from my restaurant yesterday. Gross. But I do have good veins. I could actually, I shouldn't even say okay, that. That's not weirdo. Even, that's <laughs> not, even, not even a nice thing to say. But if I wanted to, and after 15, 16, 17 minutes, we have this. Beautiful. But here's what's important. Check out the cauliflower. So if I take a piece, watch. The knife pierces easily. Now we take it and put it in the processor. In it goes. Cauliflower in. Lid goes on. And we mix. So you're going to need to just push the sides down a bit. Back into the middle, a little bit more. And now we add a couple things that give it some flavor. Starting with some whipping cream. Tell you what, uh, I've only made this for my head. I haven't actually written the ingredients down. So we'll measure so we can be exact. I'm gonna start with, I think, we'll see what a quarter cup of cream looks like. Looks like that, looks beautiful. And So it looks at this point like this, look. It's looking like mashed potatoes, which is what you want. Now we're gonna add a quarter cup, I think it's gonna end up being more, but a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese shredded, and we'll half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And then the last thing, some fresh ground pepper, a quarter teaspoon. One more. It's freaking heaven. It's amazing, gorgeous, beautiful heaven that those short ribs, when they come out and they're all unctuous and gorgeous and falling apart, are gonna rest on, it's gonna be a marriage made in, I don't know, cauliflower and short rib heaven.
And after about uh, two and three quarter hours, we're there. Come check this out. And the lid comes off and it looks like this. Oh my, come on. Please now, someone. I'm not a religious man, but can I get an amen on this? And look at this. The liquid has gravied up. It's insanely beautiful. Okay, so we got to have one. All right, let's get our mash first. And we'll put some down right here. I can smell the little bit of Parmesan coming off of that. Let's get one of these guys with the bone. Oh, come on, check. Some vegetables, of course. We can put down, we've got some celery. We've got onions somewhere in here. We've got more gravy. Oh boy. And last but not least, of course for me, a little green. And check that out. Goodness gracious. So we have a bite and here's what it's all about. This just pull apart. Look, the shredding, look it. That's what it is. That's that tender gorgeousness that happens after you've let it sit in that liquid for a little while. In this case, a couple hours. So we take some of this beautiful little broth nonsense deliciousness that it's made. We get some vegetable and we go for the perfect bite. Three words for you. Oh, holy shit. Tender, unctuous, delicious, tons of flavor, aided by the amazingness of this simple cauliflower mash. If this is not the perfect New Year's Eve dinner, I don't know what is. Look, I know people are going to be doing the, the crab and the lobster and stuff like that. That's fine. But for me, here's where I'm headed, right here to this ridiculously good short rib, slow braised in Guinness. Oh, I promised a champagne cocktail. Don't move. Okay, so here's what we have. Uh, a champagne glass, the cooking guy one that I made a few years ago. I only have like two or three left. And I have a bottle of, uh, actually it's not champagne. Did you know, some of you will, you can only call it champagne if it comes from the Champagne region of France. Like you can't call it tequila unless it comes from the province of Jalisco in Mexico. If it's from the United States, it's called uh, sparkling wine. If it's from uh, Italy, it's called Prosecco. If it's from Spain, it's called Cava, I think. So this is technically sparkling wine. I know I said champagne, but we're gonna make something great with this. So. When opening champagne, quick little lesson, be careful because once you release the cage, it could blow quickly. So never have that towards your face. Then you get yourself a towel because you want to preserve the bubbles. That's where all the fun is. You slowly turn, 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 turn. And it doesn't go flying everywhere. Yes, that's exciting and fun, but you're losing the best part often. So we pour a little bit. We're gonna add something to it that you're gonna like, I hope. So we've got our sparkling wine. We had one more thing to it and it's gonna be more Guinness. Ooh, ooh, that was used in here. Wait a second, Sam, you're thinking. That's got to be disgusting. Champagne and Guinness? Oh, quite the contrary. Champagne and Guinness is considered a black velvet. The two make a remarkable combination. Okay, so it looks like you're drinking Pepsi. But you're not. You're drinking... Straight deliciousness. That, by the way, when you combine this champagne with, wait for it, with a bite of the short rib that melts. Your comfort food at its best. With this, 
Life is good. Really good. Thanks for hanging out. If you haven't subscribed, we'd love you to. If you've never commented, we'd love that. And we want you to like. I got nothing else except to say, have a great new year and make this. Leave all those crab lobster people to themselves. You make something that your guests are going to be like, holy f***ing sh that was amazing.